But this goes back, uh, the, the one we watched last week when I extended the plant to make it more operationally friendly, it was, it said it was 2012. Well, this one is from, it says it's from 2010 because it's before that. So it's, it's good 11 years ago, almost. Uh, so uh, we'll see in a lot of pictures here. So we'll see how this all works out. But uh, the crew would come over at, at uh, the guys that come over at 630 and the Decker's job engine would be waiting for them at the engine house. So they get on their engine and uh, if I can make the thing work. Oh, wait a minute. I got to get big. That good? Everybody can see that, I hope. Yep. Nobody can see it? Yep. That's no, good. That's there. Good job. It's working. Okay. Anyway, so they get on their engine and they got a seesaw back out of the little yard that's there. They go down by those white silos, stave silos, and come back up the yard lead here. Then they get on the main line and head south. Um, the job two engine is the one with the uh, orange stripes sitting there by the deal. That's from the, the local that came up the night before. And they'll take care of all these cars you see in the photograph. Uh, they now we're basically at the south end of town. Uh, the transfer with the mill, with the trolley is, is uh, right here, those two tracks with the cars on them. The track between the engine and those two tracks was called the fill out track. If they had any extra cars for the trolley that wouldn't fit on those relatively short tracks, then they would store them there. But the trolley, trolley can get at them. You can see their, their wire doesn't go over. And so here they're pulling in and they're gonna sort out. If you look, uh, mm -hmm. there's a blue square with some uh, uh, information in it. Um, it's it's from an er the early uh, version of uh, my operating scheme. Uh, they have a switch list uh, and you can see there's two cars that from the Mason and Clear Lake, one has cattle, one's basically empty. And they're going to go to uh, uh, Decker's. One of them's going to come back. The cattle car will come back empty, and the the tank car is going to stay at Decker's. When? Uh, any Can questions? Get house, Can get my house slippers? My house slippers. And then they're going to pick up another car. Off there were two tracks uh, on the east side of the main line. The one, uh, they were called Albert Lee trucks. The Albert Lee one is the one they're on and Albert Lee two is the one that with the scale. But they're picking up a car here. And this is what's confusing about this early switch list. It says the car has got hog water in it, but it doesn't tell you if it's, if it's got it in it when you get it or when you're done with it. But it's going to, uh, it's coming from there and it's going to Decker's. But it would be an empty car going to Decker's. Uh, here with now they pulled a little further north and are picking up cars off the Milwaukee interchange. Again, they're picking up four cars. Uh, they're picking up an empty reefer, uh, a box car of uh, cans, and two stock cars of hogs. This is the latest switch list that we used. Um, and this was for one day. This was, I think, Wednesdays I grabbed. They were ro rotating. Wednesdays, cars that were left somewhere on Wednesday would be picked up on Thursday. Then the next day, switch left. They just rotated around in a five-day sequence. But this one was kind of better because it told you uh, if they were empty cars, where they were going, if they were loaded cars, where they were coming from, and what happened to them in between. And notice there are some spots here where there's, uh, there's no cars listed at all. That's for the uh, for the the switch foreman. He would actually fill in the car numbers there because a reefer was a reefer and they could go anywhere. You didn't have to spot them in, in any particular order. But anyway, moving on. 
Okay, now they're just banging cars around here at the at the interchange because there are cars on the interchange that other job is going to use too. And uh, so they want to put those back and just keep the ones they want. And that's what they're doing here. They're back and forth uh, with the cars coming and going. Now moving a little further south to uh, the middle yard or north. They move north from the from the south. Uh, and here uh, the tracks on this yard are labeled one through four with the main line running down the middle. So right now they're on track one, which is the east track. And uh, they're gonna pick up a car of boxes and they're gonna return that to track four, which has a clean out area on it. And uh, they're also gonna pick up a reefer. Now it's kind of interesting that I only remember armor reefers at the armor plant. You know, you see people who have layouts that have a packing house and they have five different different uh, companies reefers in there. That's a big X, that's no, no. They should only be reefers from the plant that uh, if it's a swift plant, they're swift reefers. But they could also on occasion have something different. And a friend of mine who was my age remembered that he used to see some uh, Emmons St. L reefers mixed in with the armor ones, not many, but there were some. So in this case, they're picking up an, uh, an MSNL least reefer. Now they're on track, uh, track two at the middle yard and they're pulling out a car that's gonna get loaded with hides, a car that's gonna get loaded with sawdust and a car that is loaded with ammonia going to the ice house. I think last year I said chlorine at last time that the ice house and it's ammonia that they would get in. Now, that engine that was setting over by the, by the station, that would have brought come up from Marshalltown the night before and it would have brought back empty reefers and tank cars. So as you can see on track two, there's three reefers and two tank cars spotted there with caboose. So this was long before I knew what they were supposed to do with the caboose um, in the, when they had their time off, that crew that came up and went back again. So we just leave it there in the yard. But now they've got to pull those cars out because they want all five of those cars, but they don't want the caboose. Now they're setting the caboose back over and they've left the cars out. Now they've grabbed onto the whole bunch. Now in later times, they wouldn't, when we, I redid everything, they wouldn't handle this many cars at one time. As you can see here, they picked up more. So they've got 15 cars here that they're pushing to Deckers. If, you know, you, the real railroad may have pushed that, but we didn't, I don't like pushing that many uh, on a model railroad. So now they've got to Deckers and this is before it was extended. So those two tracks outside will hold four cars a piece. And now they're taking some of the cars they brought with them and are ditching them on those two tracks. This was a button on the other track. Now there were three cars. Remember, I don't even remember, but last time everything, the reefers all go in groups of three. So there were three reefers in there. They're going to move those over to be loaded. Tank cars go in groups of two. Um, so anyway, as, as we continue here, uh, they just basically left all that stuff there, except for uh, the two cars of hogs and uh, I'm looking at these cars, one of, just if they're double deck or not, they may, be, we'll see what happens to them here. But anyway, the, the Georgia car has got uh, tin cans in it. So it's been spotted there, oh, I see. And they spotted the, uh, the Santa Fe stock car at the stockyard and they're keeping the two cars of hogs. Here they're, they've gone back up and now they're, they're putting things in to be loaded in, in, in that sequence so that everything would line up according to the way uh, the plant was laid out. Now, to make the job more interesting, on the car line where they 
clean the cars. They clean hot water and the reefers and steam in the tank cars. They were inspected by government inspectors before they could be loaded. Well, they find a, a tank car and they find uh, an issue with, uh, with one of the reefers. So they have to go down to the general American repair shop. So here they are leaving, uh, leaving the Deckers on the Deckers lead. And they're, now they've gone back down south uh, where the Milwaukee interchange is. And that's where also the general uh, American uh, river track is located. So here they're setting out the two batteries and they're gonna pick up two repair cars. What's kind of interesting is the car they're picking up is a, a Marks, has Marks reporting, M-A-R-S reporting Marks, was a Mathers car. <laughs> and Mathers cars were all uh, repaired by Mathers in Chicago. So instead of sending his car to Chicago to have it repaired, uh, what I'm guessing, I, my thought was at the time, is that uh, General American billed Mathers for repairs to their cars. Anyway, they're back at, uh, back at the plant doing some more rearranging. Um, we're, I'm gonna watch, uh, we're getting ready for the, for the afternoon. Uh, in the morning, all the tank cars and uh, all the reefers were loaded. All the other cars were either emptied or loaded. So well, now I'm gonna respot the place again. So here they're pulling everything out of that track, first track back there, setting out the loaded cars or the empty or loaded, whatever they might be, and uh, grabbing three fresh reefers that were on that back track, pushing those into the front track, and uh, basically looks like they had too many cars and are doing something here. Now they've grabbed everything. I think they've grabbed everything that uh, was either loaded or empty, and uh, they're heading south with all that stuff. And this would be the train that I would see at about, oh, 5.30, 6 o'clock at night coming out of Deckers and heading south. And uh, here in the beginning, we used to weigh uh, the reefers, but I, I surmised later on that the reefers were either full of canned meat, which they would know how much a can weighed and how much a box of cans weighed and how many boxes were in the car. So with math, they could figure out the weight of the car. And I'm assuming that the hanging meat, the hanging quarters and sides, they would uh, know how much they weighed before they put them in the car too. So in later years, we just weighed tank cars because that they wouldn't have any idea. So anyway, that's what I believe what they're doing here, shipping cars in there. And they've got a car that goes back, you know, that car of cattle they got from uh, the, the trolley is going back again. Here the three cars back, same three cars they had earlier. They set back at the at the Milwaukee. Now they're grabbing um, most of the cars out of uh, out of the, that track um, one, or at least one that they've they've weighed, and uh, we'll see what they do with them. They take them around to, to the middle yard, and they've got a, that chlorine or that uh, car of ammonia. And that's now empty is being spread on on track one for pickup because the way it's set up track one and track two were either northbound freight or southbound freight setups or pickups so if this car was going to head north or south would depend on what track it went on later on like i said we wouldn't be doing this the cars would go to deckers and the next operating session they would come back from deckers and now we got a car of hides that's uh, going in on track uh, one. And what they've done here is they've taken all the cars that are going to go south on the Decker Meat Express or the DMX and they've uh, hooked the caboose onto them. Uh, even though, because they needed to clear that track to get to the other end. Once they got to the other end, they picked those two cars off. 
One had boxes and one was full of sawdust, and they're putting them on the cleanup track. Now, next time, they'll, they'll be able to use the cars again for another purpose, mostly going up to the cement plants for bag cement. So the other job will take care of that. Now they're, they've ran back down to the south end of the yard and are going to grab the caboose and send it over. And then they're going to start blocking the train uh, that's going to go south. The reefers that are going to be transferred to the northwestern, I mean, uh, the Great Western in Marshalltown uh, to go to Kansas City are going to be put next to the caboose. And all the cars that are going to be dropped off for the ID to Ackley will go to the front of the train. So now here they're banging cars around, putting them in the order in which they need to be in. Here they've got their the, the Marshalltown set outs put in, and now they're going to grab the rest of the train. Here they've made it up; they've they've got it ready to go. So when uh, when job two is done, those guys uh, that came up overnight can take their engine, uh, couple it back onto this train, and head south. And that's it. We tie up end of the end of the program. Lasted a whole 25 minutes, not bad. But anyway, that was uh, that would take uh, two and a half hours or more without a break uh, when they do this on the layout. And if there's any questions, I can attempt to answer them. Otherwise, go at supper. <laughs> Very nice, Clark. All right, any questions for Clark? Now you said there was a trolley that went with this. Does it operate as a trolley? Yeah, or is it... No, the, the Mason and Clear Lake or later became Iowa Traction and I think that's what it is now or I, I can't remember one from the other. I, it's owned by uh, um, uh, progressive rail now. No, no, uh, but, but does it operate on the on the model? No, I in in later years, I actually put that uh, that stretchable string. I hung that on the trolley, put that on the trolley poles. Then I had a big sign there that said "Warning: 600 volts," <laughs> so that people would know not to uh, stick their picks of their hands amongst the wire. And then um, uh, I, I had one of them, they have, well, they still have them, but they've had different ones over the years. Um, one of the 19, I think 20 or 23 built Baldwin steeple cab. Well, they're not a steeple cab because they're, they're longer uh, trolley engines, the, the electric engines, the Baldwin electric engines. I had one of those and I had it painted up for, in the, the Mesa City Clear Lake colors. And um, that was said here. Never, I think I so ended up selling when I dumped the road, mm -hmm. I sold it to Dick Berry. And whether he, he's on the group, whether he participates here or not, I don't know. Um, uh, but I don't know if he ever made it run or not. But anyway, that's where that engine went. Uh, I don't, I have pictures of it, but not not on this thing. And at this time, all I had added was the poles. But you see the track, basically, if I move my cursor, this track here was the end of the trolley. It went down and merged into the Milwaukee. Let's see if we got a picture. Yeah, here it is. They were connected with the Milwaukee here, and their transfer with the MSL was here. And this track is running north. And down here, they made a curve and uh, to go west to Clear Lake. So it was basically an east-west road, but the east end curved north so they could uh, transfer with the Evans St. Helen and, and the Milwaukee. Over on the east side of town, they transferred with uh, the Great Western and, uh, and the Rock Island at uh, what was called uh, Clear Lake Junction, uh, where the Great Western crossed them. And they also became a little further east of there, they transferred with the Northwestern across them. So they, they basically were an east-west route that shuffled cars from railroads that were in town, but didn't uh, 
didn't connect with each other. It was done through the through the Mason and Clear Lake or the Iowa Traction. Uh, what the, I don't know what the hell they had three names. I can't remember what the other one was. I'd have to look at look things up. Is it just the truth? People that live here is just a trolley. To everybody that lives on, on, that comes here to take pictures, it's oh shit, this stuff's still running, you know. So it's still an electric railroad today. Still makes, uh, uh, they still operate daily with freight. If you want to see it in operation, uh, you can go to YouTube and uh, search under Jawtooth. I shared a link uh, a couple weeks ago of uh, live uh, operation of uh, that line. Yeah, there's probably more more movies and, and uh, more slides out there. Um, you know, we see it, you know, it's one of those things where it's never going to go away, so nobody takes pictures of it here. And one day those guys will be gone and the diesel running over there. But we'll see. It's set up now so that the uh, uh, rail has to keep those engines in operation. It's good because don't, you know, a lot more inexpensive to run than a diesel. Well, if that's it, I will shut this off and quit sharing my screen. Very good. So, yeah, like you said, Clark, that's. You said it's 10 or 11 years ago that you were operating on that? Well, with that scheme, we yeah. operated it up until whenever I tore it down, 14 or 15. But, you know, the railroad progressed and operating scheme always was honed to make it work a little better. Sure. And more realistic. I knew how, I knew how the thing was supposed to operate, talking to people that that worked that job, uh, yeah. but it was done over two shifts, and I find it all in one shift. So right. that's uh, this was a, a a good showing is how it was done with, right. uh, and but we got better at it as time went on. We did. There <laughs> you go. Bob used to be one. Used to be one of the the, the switch foremans. I thought maybe I saw Bob in one of those pictures. Yeah, he was there. Yep, a young version of himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing you forgot was the track bumper at uh, at the armor plant. Oh yes, yeah. There was. I I quit. You should have mentioned it. Uh, <laughs> when I, I I quit sharing the screen. Well, I can bring it back. Let me <laughs> yeah. let me find this. There's a there's a joke to be had. Nope, I don't have it. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I didn't and, want to interrupt your dialogue. <laughs> that's okay. Um, but anyway, uh, we had one of those guys you saw in the picture uh, as a several uh, goes by several aliases. Uh, he was called Run A or Baby Huey or Chumley. Uh, and uh, he had a problem. He could go real good. But he had a problem being able to stop. <laughs> and where where 15th Street comes out of the armor plant there, I had got one of those mini metal armor trucks and set it there. And he was always going over the end of those two storage tracks and smacking into that truck and moving it. <laughs> so eventually I just gave him the truck because I, I figured he was gonna have to find a new driver because he's that one to death. Yeah, <laughs> that might be on my layout now. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, it might be. He never hangs on to anything. No, no, he doesn't. That's great. All right. Well, thanks very much, Clark. If there aren't any more questions, so far we don't have anybody presenting next week yet. So uh, if you're interested, let me know. And uh, We'll be heading into November. Uh, through November, we'll stay at this time. I think in December, we'll be able to go back to 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern. But for now, we'll stick with 5.30. Okay. 
good enough. Yeah, and just let Ron or me know if you want to present anything. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, everybody, for joining okay. us. And good thank enough. you, Clark. Thank for the you. Yep, bye. Bye-bye.